I'm here with actor David T. Patterson. David T. Patterson, yeah. See, I got it right. We're, we're off to a great start, David. One take wonder. Here That's we right. Go. <laughs> Better than a one hit wonder, I guess. Yeah, no, well, I mean, I get, I got David Patterson was the ex-governor of New York, so I got that a lot. That was, that joke got really old real fast. Oh, I'm sure. Even actually when I made my, uh, <laughs> one of my first shows in New York, Playbill had a picture online mm -hmm. that was David, T. David Patterson. Oh, that was... Nice so that, that lasted for about two months. It was, uh, we don't really look alike. If you actually look up David Patterson, uh -huh. the governor, Governor David Patterson, yeah. he's, you know, African-American and legally blind. So Pretty different. So uh, when I post this interview, I'll make sure that I put the right photo on. No, tag the governor. Tag yeah. the governor? Yeah, I yeah. will tag the governor. <laughs> Since you don't have social media, I have Yeah, I'm, I'm not on social media, so it's all, <laughs> it's all David Patterson, one team. <laughs> now, you were just on Instinct, but before mm -hmm. we... Uh, delve into that. Let's talk a little bit about when you first decided you wanted to become an actor and you know you kind of segued into theater right off the bat, right? Yeah, yeah. I um, Growing up, I grew up in Tampa, Florida and it was really baseball and football. Mm -hmm. So those were your, kind of your two paths and um, as a kid I, I was, I had severe allergies, so mm -hmm. peanuts and tree nuts and severe asthma. So. I, uh, I played up until coach pitch, which is one step above T-ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just couldn't keep up anymore, so yeah. I, I ended up dropping out. I spent, you know, and I was also I was also like the bubble boy essentially, because if anyone brought like a PB and J, I had to sit at another table. I would like break out in hives and my throat would close up. So right. um, I kind of found I stumbled into this this niche through through that because I wasn't playing sports, mm -hmm. and I kind of. I did the talent show. Um, it was like me and my brother. We like did a little clown act, and then ever since then, I kind of followed that path to here. Did you pursue it in high school? Like, did you do the drama? Yeah, productions and that kind of I thing. I did. Yeah, I mean, it was very much like AP classes and football. I mean, we mm -hmm. had our water tower had football state champs like written on it, just in yeah. case anybody forgot. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it was like one of those kind of programs. Well, Friday Night Lights. It, it was literally Friday Night Lights, yeah, exactly. Except way hotter, because it's Tampa, Florida, you yeah. know what I mean? It must be real fun to play football. There's like there. one season, and it's just hot. It's a week, know? yeah. <laughs> Football's a week long down there. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but yeah, and I was really lucky, because um, I had a great program, and, um, we, we have Florida State Thespians, which is like a competitive circuit, so I was able to like get a lot of experience doing that. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of encouragement from teachers and actually outside of the school too. Did you decide that you were gonna do that in college or did you kind of use that as kind of a, a dual major type deal? Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I think about sophomore year of high school, I kind of realized that this is what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like an all or nothing. It was a boomer bust. So yeah. like, if I'm going to do this, if, if I had a fallback, I should just go that path, yeah. right? You Definitely. know, I mean, because I was thinking about, you know, getting like a journalism, like mm -hmm. double major or something. But I don't know. I think if you want to do it, you just got to go for it. And uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> where did you go to college? Uh, Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon. Yes, yeah, nice. Pittsburgh. So when you decided that was going to be your major, did you get any resistance from friends, family about jumping into a field that may not? No, I think it all made sense for them. Yeah. Like that kind of like, David's going to be an actor. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, I grew up like making home movies with all the neighborhood kids. Oh, so you know what I mean? So like for, that, that yeah, yeah. really tracked for yeah. them. It wasn't like, David's going to be an actor. He always right, wanted to be right. a, you know, a botanist. He, you know, there was no <laughs> oral thing. surgery path yeah. for me. It was like definitely always acting. Now, when you were done at Carnegie Mellon, uh, had your love of theater really been cemented as what you wanted to do going forward, or did you kind of have the desire to do everything, film, television, theater? I mean, I, I think I, I wanted to do everything. You know, I think they inform each other too, yeah. you know? So I think, and I'm, I'm looking, and you look at a lot of great film actors, they have really strong theater backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I definitely knew that theater training was something that was going to be really important to me and um, just how they kind of feed into each other and inform each other. Could you sing? Or can you sing? I, guess? I, I could. I'm like a, I'm not like a triple threat. I'm like a solid threat and a half. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I can, I can like kind of sing a little bit yeah. and like, you know, shuffle ball change my way through something. Yeah. But um, actually I, a lot of my resume was musical theater because I did summer stock mm -hmm. through college and that was like... And I did some great parts that I will probably never play again. You know, I was like Sky yeah. and Guys and Dolls, and yeah, who knows? You know, not come wood. But uh, right. 
Um, I was Bill Sykes and Oliver, which is the quintessential villain. Mm -hmm. You know, his song's all in minor, so like it's kind of like, it's, you surprising know, you to be cast as a villain with your personality. Being yeah, like I mean, I, I love villains. I love playing the bad guy. Well, that's I the think. most interesting. They're, yeah, and they talk about, you know, someone who's really going after their want mm -hmm. and doing everything it takes to get that. That's, yeah. that's interesting to me. And finding the humanity in villains, too, I think is something that's really exciting. What were your um, original goals in coming to New York? Did you always want to come here? Were you thinking of doing L.A., then coming here? Or what was your plan? Um, I, I, I went to L.A. for a bit just to kind of get an idea, yeah, of that, of this... Uh, of the environment out there. Um, New York was always kind of the plan for me. I mm -hmm. wanted to stay East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I think starting off, it's a lot easier in New York because you have such a strong theater presence and that, once again, like bleeds right into the film. All, a lot of the big TV casting directors, Mark Sachs, mm -hmm. Marcy Phillips, you know, Finley Davidson, they all come and see theater. Right. So as mm -hmm. a young actor, especially without a lot of TV credits to your name, that was really helpful to me. And now that being in New York, there are quite a few television series that do tape here. So. Oh my gosh, so much. Yeah. yeah, and you can be competitive in LA with self-tape. I mean, you got your phone in a tripod right now, you know what I mean? You can just self-tape yourself way and to, send way, you. Way Did to, I call you out? Yeah, way that? to call oh, yeah, you yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's going to do another interview now. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just so I think they're going to appreciate you even more. <laughs> well, there goes our one-take wonder. Yeah, no, I'm we're good. Nope. That post. We're not cutting. Nope, there is no post. <laughs> so what was the first role you booked when you moved out here? Or up here, or I think the first role I booked was it was actually a motion capture job for Rockstar Games. Mm -hmm. um, so I put on full blue suit with the little motion capture balls, had the camera, and uh, it was for uh, for Red Dead Redemption too. Okay. So I played like a guy who got shot in the chest with an elephant gun, and two years two years later, they actually brought me back for like a character at like an arc, which was really fun. Um, so that was my first like professional job. In what was the that city. like acting in a different sort of space than you were oh, planning on. Yeah, no, I mean, it was so exciting. I mean, that's, I mean, I think that was probably the apex of my career for my younger brother, mm -hmm. um, was being in a video game and he could, you know, kick me in the balls whenever yeah. he wants to. <laughs> so I think that really actually helped our relationship. Um, See, your career has nurtured your sibling, <laughs> my sibling relationship. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, no, that fraternal bond was a lot younger stronger. Younger or older brother? Younger brother. Younger also, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You took it out on him growing up, and now and now he can stick it out on me virtually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Less painful that way. Yeah, but I mean that was I mean that was that was so much fun, and it's definitely a different way of working, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, talk about just imaginative, you know. what I mean, because you're just like in this room, and you're creating a world for yourself, you know. And you got a bunch of 30, 40, 50 year old men in blue leotards, you know, with like cowboy with boots, walking. yeah, with ball covered in balls, yeah. yeah. So it's. <laughs> it's <laughs> You heard of the casting. <laughs> I was going to say, you've heard of the casting couch. This is a different Yeah, right, different truly direction. a different beast, yeah. <laughs> so what was your first theater role here? First theater role, I mean, I lucked out big time. I um, did Dangerous Liaisons um, on Broadway with Jan McTeer and Leo Schreiber and friend of the show, Rocky Barsoomian. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was the major domo, which was like essentially um, the, the leads, uh, the lead woman, Janet's, um, her like butler slash like right hand man. Mm -hmm. And then I understudied the, the two young guys in the show. What was it like to get thrown into a production with such heavyweight hitters like Janet and Matt? I, I mean, it was such a blessing, you know, yeah. to get to learn from these people. And that's really was for me, it was like a time to just to watch them work, to see how important a lead of a show is mm -hmm. in creating a rehearsal space. And, in a performance. Are you someone that is more comfortable when you're doing theater because of the live aspect of it and you thrive on that or do you like having the opportunity to get multiple takes? You know I think um, I as a Libra I always seek balance in my life and I think having a balance of those two is is exciting. I love being in conversation. I love that instant gratification. I love the continuity. Mm -hmm. It is so nice about theater because you know when you're doing film TV you're shoot in the end first day you know right. what I mean when you're supposed to have built a relationship with this person and then you know what I mean three months later you do meeting for the first time and it's all truncated and and bought up and sometimes it can be hard to drop into something when you have you know a guy dropping a boom in your face and you have like six lighting guys and you know you're sweating profusely and they're like trying to dab you with every <laughs> kind of like makeup or mover. Um, but uh, but then there's an intimacy with mm -hmm. film and TV that is so 
exciting for me. Now, in order to get your quote unquote SAG card, I put that in quotation marks mm -hmm. because all young actors usually do a horror film or they do S Law and Order SVU, especially New York actors. I actually have I, haven't, I haven't popped my SVU cherry yet. You have not? No. You popped the horror film one? I, um, I auditioned for a lot of horror films. I think I, I got my SAG card doing The Dukes. So that's, uh, that's decent. It's like that's a, adjacent to. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of film. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no inside stories here. Yeah. We, we don't want to blow anybody's. Uh, no, 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 no. Not in I, terms of like a, it was. It was an off, awesome set, awesome experience. I uh, like how I weaseled my way into trying to get you to spill. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah, my no. Barbara Walters technique. <laughs> Dude, almost worked. I did. I looked it almost worked. I looked just like her. Um, so working on the Deuce, that was your first um, show that you did more than one uh, episode of, right? Yeah, that was um, that was like my first quote unquote recurring, recurring character. Yeah. I was Randy the bartender, mm -hmm. um, which was like really exciting because I thought, oh, I'm going to be in this bar. They're always going to come back to the bar. Mm -hmm. I'll get like a chance to like you know. Like, it's HBO, so yeah. like most of my stuff got cut. <laughs> it's like if you like really like squint, you could see me in the background there, like two shots. Yeah, but that's but, it's still the experience you gain being on the set. And, oh yeah, and you know, putting like, the work in. So yeah, even working with was, James Franco, working with all these kind of guys, it was it was really cool. That's awesome. And you were just in a, a film, also, right? Mm -hmm. the yeah, social the class? social ones. Yeah, the social ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that experience like? That was also, um, I mean, working on an independent film, mm -hmm. but with some really heavy hitters. Stephanie March was like mm -hmm. the star of it, but also was a producer on well, it. Well, so you six degrees of Law and Order, then. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I'm like, counts. I'm like all the way around it. You know, at this point, I have like my honorary SVU card. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that came out in March, and then you were just mm -hmm. on a episode of Instinct. Yep. Talk about a little bit about that and your character. Yeah, just I just aired this past Sunday. I, think. I was yeah aired this past Sunday. I was Earl. He's like, a, you know, I mean, it's maybe it's too pejorative to call him a carny. He's a, a theme park uh, employee who runs the roller coaster, and he's trying to impress his date and then finds the body. So it's like that classic cold open. Better than being the body, I guess. Better than being the body. So that's also kind of like in the realm of a horror film, I yeah. guess you could say. Now, when you're going uh, in for castings, are you always cast as, or, or seen for the, the boy next to or the, the hunky muscular guy? Or do you go, that was my compliment. That's the only one you're getting. You know what? And I'm like, I'm bullshit. You'll take it, I'm right? bullshit here, Brian. Thank you, Muskie. Tell big, me more. Tell me more about Boy Next Door. <laughs> me? They me? made me big bucks to say that to you. Yeah, true. <laughs> I have residuals going to be coming in now. I will pay you residuals. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I actually, my, um, I've been really fortunate to go out to like just a wide breadth of different kind of roles and, and parts. That's great. So I, I haven't been, I've never felt pigeonholed as one thing. I, I have been going up for a lot of older characters, which is like a blessing and a curse because, um, I mean, they're more exciting parts, they're leads, but I'm also going up against people who have more credits, you know? Right. So that's kind of like that. It's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you're also going to be going away uh, soon to perform in Noises Off, correct? That's yeah, exciting. at the Cape Playhouse in Cape Cod, so I get to spend the summer out there, which is gonna be a real treat that's awesome it's gonna be like right in the heat of the summer you know when the subway literally smell, literally legitimately <laughs> like trash yeah. yeah so that'll be a nice that'll be a so, nice break a nice break yeah and um who are you playing in the show um i am um i'm the i'm the christopher reeves part in the movie so freddie the, the guy who a lot of a lot of Pratt falls a lot of are you uh, excited to do the physical comedy is that the first yeah i love time you've comedy. done it yeah yeah is this the first experience for you like doing, doing noises off not doing those as often, doing like the physical like comedy. No, I've done I've done you know in summer stock I've done a lot of you know playing multiple parts, doing a lot of kind of like pratfalls. Mm -hmm. I've actually done more stage combat than physical comedy. Um, in liaisons, doing you know we were doing some small sword kind of dueling, and I've done some a lot of Shakespeare, which is more like long sword, broad sword kind of stuff. But uh, this will be my first time like falling downstairs, my underwear over my head. You know yeah. what I mean? So it'll yeah. be, it'll Speaking be. Speaking of you nice and your underwear of over your head, head, when I was researching you and typed your name, and since you don't have social media, this is probably the governor that you're looking at. I don't think I think yeah. you got the wrong David. No, no. If you're, if like underwear <laughs> over the head. There was somebody who who wanted you to be their boyfriend back then. It's on, it's, it's online. I'll show you after we wrap. Yeah, you're gonna have to show me after. If you're so, around. you know, in case things don't work out, you have someone online who wanted to be your boyfriend. 
Was it you, Brian? It was not me. <laughs> okay. Are you planting this material? <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> I scoured the internet. Oh my gosh, who is this? Yeah, it's like, oh, let me see if I get an interview with him. <laughs> and finally, um, one of the things besides acting that you do, you read to uh, youth, right? What's the organization? Yeah, it's, it's the Pachama program. Oh, so yeah. they do like a lot of kind of like inner city kids mm -hmm. that they come in. Um, so they get paired with an adult. We sit and we read and uh, then they get a pair of pajamas afterwards. So, nice. Yeah, and it's, it's cool because, you know, um, that, was, that was really formative for me was um, having my dad read me stories like, you know, we did. Harry Potter, Golden Compass, you know, mm -hmm. we did all the classics. <laughs> do they... Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The <laughs> do they um, let the youngster that you're working with know what you do so that they can kind of ask questions if, if they're interested in that as a career or is it more just like a bonding type no, thing? No, it's more just kind of like a bonding thing. Nice. Yeah, so it's just to have, you know, like a pot, and I think um, there's not a whole lot of, of guys who do it, so, mm -hmm. so I think... Having like a, a male presence is, is kind of cool and exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. What what has been the most gratifying thing for you in doing it? Uh, I I think just getting to interact with these kids. Yeah. You know, and and feel like I'm I'm contributing to, to maybe spark their interest in, in reading or performing or anything like that. Do you feel it's just another avenue of you performing when you're reading? The shows to make or reading the pardon me the whatever you're reading to them the stories to make it more interesting for them it's, are it's you definitely give it? me a lot of like you know i'm working on my ten thousand hours on animal voices <laughs> so you know i've done like a lot of animal voices so whenever i get like a voiceover a voiceover uh, audition i can really knock that out of the park oh there you go Looking see so it's helping you and helping them yeah exactly yeah that's really why i'm doing it. I'm just doing it for the experience I, I knew I, I knew you were too good to be true. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish you all the best with Noises Off. Ah, thanks. Wish it was down here. I'd love to come see you do it. Well, Unless if you need like a break from the city, thing. you know, getting stuck on the A train with no AC, <laughs> like, come look us up. Hey, you know? we, we're you know, right we got to love New Jersey dude. Transit. I'll be up there probably <laughs> over the weekend. I might actually come with you. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. It was yeah, a real thank pleasure. You, man. Appreciate it.